Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, I'm going to give out my full in-depth review of the OnePlus 6 and I have been using this device now for over three weeks and uh, for example, if you guys follow me, I traveled to Bali and during that time also, this was my primary smartphone. So I'll divide that between the pros and cons and yes, I've got uh, quite a few cons also with this device. Uh, but before that, uh, here are the specs of the OnePlus 6. So as you can see, it is part with the Snapdragon 845 chipset which is the most powerful chipset for offered by Qualcomm as of now and it comes with the 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM. Moving to the storage the regular variants come with 64 or 128 gigabytes and the special edition come with 256 gigabytes of uh, storage and other specs are on the screen for your reference. And guys I tested the regular variant that has the 8 gigabytes of RAM and that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage for this review and let's divide it between the pros and cons and also guys I've already posted some other videos on the OnePlus for example regarding uh, the common questions that I was getting uh, so FAQ video that I have posted and also it's camera review when I was in Bali so again uh, links for those videos will also be there in the description area so let's get on with the pros and cons let's first talk about the good things what I liked about the OnePlus 6 and uh, the first thing is uh, how it now looks and now let me actually remove the case guys and i've been using this device with this supplied case that comes in the box not using any special case so let me just take it out and the first thing is regarding looks now it looks a lot more premium if you see because of that glass pack but again it also makes the phone fragile in my opinion that's the reason i was using this one with the case but yes definitely in terms of looks now it looks a lot more premium and just like almost every other android uh, flagship this one also has a notch so you might like it or not but again in the oxygen os settings if you really want you can actually uh, hide the notch if you want so that option is there so definitely in terms of looks it looks a lot more premium now uh, because of that uh, glass back but also it makes it a little bit uh, what he says slippery and because of the glass back uh, if you use it without a case it can uh, get uh, smashed up and the fingerprints are easily visible now moving to another thing is that they moved the alert slider i always like the alert slider on the oneplus earlier it was on this left side now it's on the right side and when you use that alert slider now the animation actually changes beside that to show you what it is doing so again it's a small nice touch i still like this alert slider now moving to uh, again as it's a oneplus device running on the uh, flagship uh, snapdragon 845 chipset uh, the overall uh, usage of the phone is very fluid and you will not notice any lag whatsoever with this device uh, oxygen was very optimized and it's close to stock android uh, apart from some minor modifications that it does which adds to the user experience so again in terms of fluidity it's a very fluid device and this is one of the those rare android phones though it has that custom ui skin that is known as oxygen os but as it's very close to stock android it is one of the most fluid android phones so again in terms of usability fluidness you won't notice any lagginess with this device this was the case earlier even with the oneplus 5t and this continues with this uh, smartphone now moving to another good thing that i like is that because of the snapdragon 845 chipset they have enabled true dual 4g volte on this so you can simultaneously put two uh, 4g sim cards and actually use uh, with this device which can become a uh, necessary moving forwards because most of the networks are now moving to volte so that is actually supported on this device and with the latest update uh, that i just got this earlier morning they have enabled volte even for idea cellular apart from regular stuff like geo volte and others work with this one also in terms of cellular call quality i tested this device uh, with two sims with airtel and with geo and one was in bali actually i was using it with airtel and international roaming was enabled so in terms of cellular call quality, I have no issues with this device. Uh, it was very good. And even in terms of network reception, the network reception was actually very good in this device. Again, uh, I would say if we compare it with other devices, it's above uh, average, uh, if I would say. And in terms of cellular call quality and receptions, I did not have the problem. Even the earpiece is loud and clear. The speaker phone, though it's a single speaker, I'll talk about the speaker uh, in the later part of the video. But uh, if you take what do you say, uh, calls via the speakerphone they are actually loud 
Now moving to the battery life, in terms of battery capacity, if you compare it with earlier OnePlus uh, devices like the OnePlus 5T, etc., it hasn't changed 3400 milliamp hour uh, battery that we are getting. And in terms of battery life, again, as I've traveled uh, this uh, with this phone, even internationally, I had mixed usage results. When I was in Bali, the network, cellular networks are not good. And signal uh, level where we were living, uh, we were staying actually was very low. And in those scenarios, yes, the battery life when I was completely on mobile data, struggled a little bit and i was hovering just around three and a half hours to four hours of screen on time with this one uh, but here in hyderabad uh, i'm using it with airtel and geo and here the network reception is a lot better and here i would say i'm getting very good battery life easily a screen on time of about five and a half hours to six hours so again the battery life what i've noticed is that the, if the network reception is bad in your area then it definitely sucks up, sucks up the battery quite a bit and in terms of battery life again if i compare it with the one plus 5T. I haven't noticed a huge difference in terms of battery life. I would say the battery life is similar to the OnePlus 5T that I was getting. So uh, I would say for a typical user, it will easily last for a single day. And if you're sort of a light user, about one and a half days per charge. The good thing is that it still comes with dash charger, which is extremely quick when I was in Bali, even uh, when we were moving around, uh, even a uh, 10 minute top up uh, increased the battery life considerably. So again, we still have the fast charging that is known as dash charging and it works really well with this device. Now moving to gaming, again, it's having the Snapdragon 845 chipset. So all the heavy games I threw on it ran fine. No issues with the gaming. And now let's move to the camera. Here again, um, as uh, you have uh, must have seen the other video that I posted when I was in Bali, uh, I took a lot of sample shots and I made a camera review video, the real camera review with the, uh, what do you say, OnePlus 6. Again, check out that video if you want to know more about the camera. But again, to summarize, I would say, as you see from the real uh, camera sample shots the rear facing camera actually is actually really good and now they have enabled optical image stabilization on this and the biggest advantage was that now even in artificial lighting conditions and indoor lighting conditions where the lighting might not be that great definitely the optical image stabilization helps and if you compare with earlier oneplus devices i would definitely say in terms of uh, low light sensitivity uh, the performance has improved on this one uh, but the second camera uh, is just used for uh, portrait yes you can get those depth effects uh, like that uh, background blur easily with this one that is accomplished and now with the latest update this was not uh, there when i was in bali just now i got this update now even with the front facing camera as you can see these are some of the sample shots that i have took uh, in varying light conditions outdoors as you can see you get that background blur effect and i tried it even in this office in uh, this lighting scenario and yes uh, uh, you get that uh, background blur effect with, even with the front facing camera so yes the camera performance is good but again i feel again in terms of video uh, the rear facing camera stabilization is very good thanks to ois and even electronic stabilization even uh, when we were in bali on this boat as you can see this sample footage we were moving around uh, and the, it was very jumpy boat because of that electronic stabilization the footage looks very good so in terms of stabilization it's actually doing a very good job and even the front facing camera actually employs electronic image stabilization but again when you use the front facing camera i I would say for video it crops in quite a bit uh, here is a sample footage that i took after the latest update so here you see the footage from the front facing camera recording this sample video again with the front facing camera of this one plus six and this footage is after the latest update that actually adds the portrait uh, mode and yes still in video with the front facing camera it uh, crops in quite a bit as you can see so yeah because of that electronic image stabilization it is still cropping the footage but again uh, this is a very quick uh, what do you say if, uh, footage with the front facing camera and one thing I really liked uh, with the OnePlus 6 this was a problem with earlier one, OnePlus devices this time as you can see I'm just walking outdoors and it's a little bit windy earlier OnePlus devices used to pick up a lot of wind so if you are vlogging like this the audio used to be unusable but uh, here in this case with the OnePlus 6 they really improved the microphone sensitivity and even if you vlog like this and use the internal microphone the audio is usable so these were the good things about the OnePlus 6 as you can see it's evolutionary upgrade i would say uh, if you already have the oneplus uh, 5t not a major change yes it has that new notch design because everybody is going with that and some of other things now let's move to the cons and uh, some of the things that i actually did not like with this device and the first thing is that because of this glass back i don't know why they did it uh, they have moved the placement of the fingerprint scanner just 
uh, uh, below that underneath the flash and I've, actually they've made it slightly smaller in my frank opinion and uh, yes now i've got used to it after about three weeks but during the first uh, week uh, and even about uh, after one and a half weeks i was accidentally uh, touching it here so uh, i don't like the placement of the fingerprint scanner uh, they should have went with the round design instead of this rectangular design but yeah eventually you get used to the same and yes obviously it has that face unlocking feature which actually is pretty fast uh, but again, it's not the most secure as you can see. This is the face unlocking and it works. But yeah, the fingerprint scanner position, uh, you will eventually get used to it. Now I'm used to it, but I don't like it. Now moving to uh, this point, and this is regarding the secondary camera that we have. The uh, primary camera is a 16 megapixel shooter that has optical image stabilization. The secondary camera, they say it's a 20 megapixel uh, shooter. And to be frank, they are actually not utilizing the secondary camera, apart from if you use the portrait mode. It is only used in the portrait mode to get that blur effect. Apart from that, they are not using it. So I see uh, it's a wastage of the second camera. They should have gone with the wide angle lens or done something special with the secondary camera. So that way I'm slightly disappointed that the secondary camera is not doing much with this one. I hope in the future versions of OnePlus 6, they do something really useful with the secondary camera not just have it for the sake of having it now moving to another thing is that uh, though they have added this uh, glass back but wireless charging is simply not there on this uh, smartphone and also uh, again uh, we don't have any official IP rating. That means water resistance and dust resistance rating for this smartphone. OnePlus team says that this is splash fruit. For example, if you go out in rain and water falls on it, nothing will happen. But officially, they don't have any IP rating. So I would have uh, loved to see official IP rating that would have given peace of mind. Now moving to uh, this major uh, con, but uh, that uh, I actually uh, experienced this because I was using this device quite a bit. But before I mention that, here is a word from the sponsor of this video that is mevi.n. Mevi Thunderbeat Bluetooth earphones look stylish with metallic body. You can take phone calls and it supports passive noise cancellation. The ear hooks fit securely and stay in place even when you are working out or running. With Qualcomm CSR Bluetooth IC, the music quality is amazing and has great battery life. It has HD stereo sound with super solid bass. It supports Aptex codec with lossless wireless audio. Use coupon code GIGINANJI15 at MeeWee.in to get 15% discount on all Miwi products. See link in the description below for more info. Okay, so continuing, uh, this is one thing that I noticed with OnePlus devices and it's even if, uh, with this OnePlus 6. Though they have the speaker here at the bottom, it is actually pretty loud. But again, when you increase the volume after let's say 75%, the volume level, yes, it increases, the, but the volume also becomes very shrill. So it sounds a little bit tinny and uh, hurts your ear. So I still don't like uh, that uh, they're using that single speaker. They should have gone with the dual speaker because we are seeing a lot of smartphones now in the market that have that dual speaker and that gives a very immersive uh, experience uh, I don't mind that it's uh, still having a 1080p screen uh, it's a good AMOLED screen and the viewing angles are good but again uh, I was watching a lot of videos when I was in Bali uh, with this one and because of that single speaker and it was shrill I simply did not enjoy the experience that much so in that department hopefully OnePlus can improve quite a bit and another thing again as we are talking about the sound is that yes this one still retains the 3.5 mm headphone jack I'm glad that it still retains that but the audio output that I was getting from the headphone jack and I've used quite a few headphones with this one uh, wired headphones I simply did not like it that much. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but the sound output is actually relatively very flat to uh, my liking. So uh, I hope they enhance that in uh, future versions. So again, uh, it's not bad to say, but again, I expected it something better. And uh, lastly is regarding the pricing of this device. Uh, OnePlus has been increasing the pricing of their devices lately. And this one also, the base variant uh, that comes with six gigabytes of RAM comes with, uh, what do you say, 64 GB of storage is for 35,000, which is a very fair price for this device, I would say, considering what it is doing. But the slightly higher variant that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage and comes with eight gigabytes of RAM is now priced at 40,000. So definitely OnePlus has also started uh, charging uh, a little bit of premium to their device and i hope that trend doesn't continue further but still i would say 
uh, considering the price point of this device and if you look at the base variant which is more than enough many of you have asked me uh, should we go with the 6 gigabyte uh, ram variant or the 8 gigabyte ram variant even the 6 gigabyte ram variant is more than enough you really don't need the 8 gigabyte ram variant decide based on the storage because this one doesn't have a micro sd card uh, word slot so if you think you can live with 64 gigabytes of storage out of that roughly you'll get about 54 or 55 gb then go with the 6 gigabytes of variant only go with the 8 gigabyte ram variant if you think you require more than 60 gigabytes of internal storage so guys this was a very uh in-depth look at the oneplus x and my thoughts regarding the same so overall if you consider the price point as of now in india at rupees 35,000, still i would say the oneplus x overall if you look at the package yes not everything is right uh, but overall package still i would say this is one of the best smartphones that you can get for 35,000. i only hope uh, future versions of oneplus improves the sound uh, quality from the speaker the headphone jack and also uh, hopefully we get a official ip rating so guys that's it for now for uh, this video as i mentioned i've also posted other videos regarding the oneplus x specifically the faq video and its camera review link for those videos will be there in the youtube uh, show notes and if you guys are still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys